Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing the center of our own galaxy once again, but not the black hole. We're going to be discussing something, or many things, that orbit around the black hole. And more specifically, if we were to move toward this area, which actually takes just under 30,000 light years to reach, we would sort of discover an area that resembles something like this, containing quite a lot of different stars and star-like objects, and containing quite a lot of activity and a lot of motion. Now, this is sort of the simulation here, but we do have actual images from this area as well, something that was created over a period of at least 20 years. And it's actually because of these images and because of the motion of these stars, that the scientists were able to definitively say that there is something really massive and something really dense in the middle, something that's very likely a black hole, which eventually resulted in this. The scientific collaboration of the Event Horizon Telescope that created this beautiful image that we have of the central black hole. Oops, talking about the black hole again. Anyway, let's talk about the stars orbiting it. So the central region contains quite a lot of stars in orbit around the black hole, and most of them are currently known as the S stars, with the actual list being pretty long. And most of these stars are entirely different from one another, but they do basically share one thing in common. They're all gravitationally attached to the black hole itself, and they also seem to interact with one another, at least to some extent. Now, the most studied and the most well-known of these stars is the star known as S2. It's also the star that's basically allowed the scientists to study a lot of different gravitational effects and prove a lot of Einsteinian theories. As a matter of fact, uh, back in 2018, this star had its closest approach to the black hole once again and allowed the scientists to see the redshifting effects that were essentially the result of higher gravity in this region. Now, this image right here is just an illustration, it's not actually what it looked like, but the scientists did detect redshifting effects in the spectrum coming from the star as it approached the center. And when it comes to these stars, it's sort of important to understand a little bit more about the orbital dynamics when it comes to objects orbiting other objects. In this case, an object with higher eccentricity, like the object that you see in pink or I guess that's maroon color, will have much higher velocity when it approaches the star or the black hole in this case. And this region right here that we usually refer to as a periapsis. Whereas the object orbiting in a circular orbit, like the red object, will always have constant velocity around the central area. And so the scientists in this case are always on the lookout for new stars that seem to approach the black hole at their closest. Specifically here we're talking about stars that would be super super close to the center. And that's because these stars would be zooming around the black hole at ridiculously high velocities. They would actually be the fastest stars in our galaxy. And it just so happens that very recently there was an article that I seem to have seen in many different places that claimed to have discovered the new fastest star in a galaxy. Based on this very recent paper that you can find in the description below, of the star known as S4716, a completely newly discovered object that's also orbiting somewhere in this region. And being such an exciting object, it already seems to have its own Wikipedia page, although a relatively short one, where it is claimed that this is the fastest star known to us, reaching the velocity of approximately 8,000 km per second as it approaches the closest part of the orbit, the one that I showed you here, known as Periapsis. The thing is, that's not entirely correct. It is an exciting object, and it is an exciting star, but it's far from being the fastest. As of today, the fastest star discovered is still the one that was discovered and talked about on this channel two years ago, back in 2020. So let's maybe clarify some details and a few more things about this object, and also talk about some really exciting discoveries coming from this paper. So first, the star itself. According to the scientists, it seems to be approximately four times the mass of our sun, representing what we usually refer to as a B-type star, with an average temperature of about 12,000 degrees. 12,000 Kelvin, that is. And what makes this star unique and quite exciting is the fact that it has the fastest orbit around the black hole. It only takes roughly around 4 years to orbit once. As a matter of fact, you can kind of see that in this case, its orbit is so tight compared to some of the other stars, that it's actually almost impossible to even see it, as its sort is blocked by a lot of other stars in the area. The biggest culprit in this case is that S2 star. S2 in this case is so bright and moves quite fast as well, that it actually ends up covering some of this area and makes detection of other stars quite difficult. Nevertheless, by using the total of five different telescopes observing this region, which is exactly what you're seeing right here, these are the actual images, the scientists were able to discover this new star and also confirm some of the other stars as well. 
With the star S4716 coming extremely close to the black hole, roughly around 100 astronomical units away from the center. That's almost three times as far away as Pluto, but is actually closer to us than the current position of the Voyager 1 and Voyager 2. And at this distance, it moves at a speed of about 8000 km per second. And that's of course because the black hole in the middle is really massive, with this most recent calculation suggesting that the mass is at least 4 million masses of the Sun, a little bit closer to 4.1, but not 4.3 as previously claimed. While at the same time the scientists were also even able to calculate the total mass of stuff orbiting around the black hole. And so here we're talking about both the accretion disk and a lot of other dust and a lot of other star-like and planet-like stuff that's essentially accumulated in this region. They've discovered that there's at least 20,000 masses of the Sun in the region of this black hole that seems to sort of change the orbits of certain objects that come a little bit too close. So in some sense you can think of it as the accretion disk. And in this case they were also able to determine a relatively accurate distance measurement to the black hole, establishing that it's about 26.2 thousand light years away from planet Earth. While also discovering that some of these previous observations of other stars might actually have been confused with one another because some of these stars are a little bit too bright and cover the smaller objects. With a relatively bright and really fast star known as S62, that manages to reach the velocity of about 20,000 km per second at its closest, also being really bright and moving fast enough that sometimes it's confused for other stars. Which means that the current list of S stars in this region may need to be reanalyzed by some of the future studies. Suggesting that some of these stars might not exist because they were just another star that seemed to have been in that location that some of the studies might have misinterpreted as a completely new object. But because of the shortness of the orbit of S4716, on average it does actually have the fastest velocity around the black hole. So at its closest it approaches the black hole at approximately 98 astronomical units, but at its farthest it only goes to about 702 astronomical units. And so in theory at least, it essentially has the fastest orbit around the black hole of all of the stars discovered so far, with its orbital period looking something like this. But, as I mentioned, this is not the fastest star. That record belongs to another really interesting star that approaches the black hole at a distance of just 12.6 astronomical units away from the center, almost as close as planet Saturn to the Sun, and that's a star known as S4714. We've talked about this object on the channel previously, and you can learn more about this in one of the links in the description. And in this case, at its closest, the speed of the star is approximately 24,000 km per second, roughly around 8% of the speed of light, and that makes it at least three times faster than the recently identified and recently discovered star, which also means that the record holder here is still the star known as S4714, and it's very unlikely that its record is going to be beat anytime soon. This older paper describes this discovery in a little bit more detail. But its orbital period is 12 years, so the only reason it has such a high velocity close to the black hole is because of the eccentricity once again. Or in other words, its orbit is a lot more oval in shape. The eccentricity here is about 98.7%, and so at its closest the speed becomes ridiculously fast. But a lot of these S stars move really fast at their closest orbit. Actually, only very few of them move with a speed of less than 1000 km per second at the closest approach, so all of them have very fast velocities. And you can actually check out this table that you can find in the description below that shows you some of the other parameters of all of these stars. In this case, if we actually sort all of these stars by speed, you can kind of see which ones are the fastest, and S2 is pretty fast compared to all of these objects. Although none of this is currently formalized and none of these names are even permanent, and so some of these properties and some of the names as well might change in the future. This is still a pretty new area of study, and in this case the scientists still don't really know much about the stars or how all of this interacts with the central black hole over time. But when it comes to S4716, one of the most surprising discoveries is actually how stable the orbit is considering the total distance to the supermassive black hole. At the moment the scientists are not entirely certain how it's able to have such a stable and somewhat permanent orbit in this vicinity. And more specifically they're really not certain how it even got here. How did the star drop its orbit so much that it approached the black hole without essentially being destroyed or without disappearing somewhere else? And so that's one of the mysteries the scientists are trying to solve. 
At the moment they think it's actually because of the total mass orbits in the black hole that it eventually sort of interacted with the star and lowered its orbit over time, but at the moment nobody really knows. It is however quite unlikely that a star like this would form in this region by itself, so it must have migrated here during its existence in the central region from somewhere entirely different. Nevertheless, it's a pretty exciting discovery because now by knowing its orbit and by being able to actually look at the star, the scientists can start analyzing the vicinity of the black hole even more and possibly discover some other unusual objects we didn't really know existed in this area. They can also use the minute deviations of the orbit of the star to discover any unusual gravitational anomalies that might be present in the area, either for example due to the accretion disk or possibly some other invisible objects, possibly even other black holes, orbiting around the central Sagittarius A star. But I guess for now, well, that's pretty much all we know. It's a pretty exciting discovery and it's always fun to talk about the central region of the galaxy, especially because all of this is relatively new information that we only started exploring just over a decade ago, and most of these discoveries are from the last five years. And so we'll definitely be coming back and talking more about this once more telescopes join in and start to participate in the observations of the central region, and for all we know, we might actually find something else really exciting. It would be really fun to discover some kind of a planet in this region. For now though, thank you for watching, subscribe, maybe share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.